Hey, welcome to the cave. Makes for a nice relaxing atmosphere, doesn't it? Let's look at some interesting swords and daggers from history that look surprisingly uncomfortable. Now, some, in some cases, you never know, they might not be quite as uncomfortable in the hand when you actually hold them. Generally, there aren't too many things that are really all that uncomfortable as far as weapons designed for use are concerned because, well, they weren't stupid and they had to rely on these to defend their life. A lot of the ones that I'm going to show you are not actually intended for practical use. A lot of them may be, here's the dirty word again, ceremonial or court swords, status symbols, etc. I'll just go in chronological order. So the first one is one of the oldest swords that are known. Uh, I've talked about them before in a video about the oldest swords. So this one is made of bronze. There are older ones made of copper, but they all share this odd characteristic of, of very weirdly shaped grips. So they tend to be remarkably wide, but rather thin. I mean, if this picture here is accurate and doesn't distort the shape due to perspective, then it is extremely thin uh, to the point where it can't be designed for actual fighting. So this could very well be a status symbol, you know, trade object, things like that. So it might not be an actual sword as in fighting sword, but either way, interesting to look at and point out. These are the old copper swords I mentioned, and I really can't imagine wrapping my hand around one of these. I mean, they are very short and very wide and apparently also quite thin. So I really can't imagine that they are comfortable without having actually handled them. Next up, what do you think this is? An ornamental table or chair leg? An ancient lightsaber hilt? Well, it is a hilt. It's a sword hilt. This is an ancient Assyrian sword hilt. It's not what I would have guessed without knowing it. It's a very odd shape to hold in your hand for a sword because it seems to be completely round and now this bulbous shape here in the center that could be useful. A palm swell is definitely useful for you know providing good grip. Then you've got all this other stuff, all these ridges. Now they could provide for a good grip to be fair. I just cannot imagine you would be able to feel edge alignment at all with this. Now I have a personal vendetta against round grips for that reason. I like that there's a note saying swords here because you might not be able to tell otherwise by these drawings. At least if I look at this right here and this and that, I would not have interpreted that as a sword grip at all. And here's another example. Now, I might be wrong about these. Maybe they aren't as awkward in the hand as they look. I just find it difficult to imagine that with such a shape that you would be able to effectively control the sword. They use them, apparently, so they didn't seem to mind, but it's also an early stage in, or comparatively early stage in the development of swords. So, who knows? Here's a 2,600-year-old Chinese bronze sword, or as I like to call it, a real-life Minecraft sword with a remarkably blocky handle. Uh, can you imagine trying to hold this in your hand and, and trying to strike something with it? Yikes. It actually popped up on Reddit, and this person also thinks it looks really uncomfortable. There's an interesting reply here. Um suggesting that it was wrapped in something. You know, wrapped in leathers or other fabrics to be held, and the blade has its share of nicks, so it does look used. I don't think this was intended to be wrapped simply because of the decoration. Like, why would you bother decorating it like this if you're just going to cover it up anyway? And the, the grip has the exact same sort of decoration as the the guard and the pommel so it seems like they expected it to be visible they wanted this to be shown and as far as damage is concerned if we take a closer look at it 
They're very minor nicks. I wouldn't even really call that nicks. I don't think this is battle damage. This is just a preservation issue. There's nothing really significant. In fact, I'm pretty sure this was never used and never intended to be used. For comparison, here's a very different sword. And this is difficult to interpret. Is there battle damage or is it just poorly preserved? Uh, there's plenty that can happen to a blade throughout centuries and even millennia in this case. So something like this, you know, yeah, it could be damage from battle, but it seems more likely that this was from, you know, being in the ground for so long than being dug up, being transported, etc. So there's, there's plenty of corrosion that can happen over time. These are reproductions of bronze swords used in experimental archaeology to compare this sort of damage from various strikes and parries to the archaeological record. And so this is a lot more obvious. You, know, you can see there are some pretty deep nicks and gouges in the blade. And uh, it of course also depends on how they are used. And uh, this damage is consistent with archaeological findings. Here's another one. Beautiful, impressive craftsmanship on this. Precious materials. You've got gold for the hilt. You've got uh, mineral inlays. This is probably turquoise. It just looks stunning. I sent LK Chen an email about these and got a helpful reply right away, which I very much appreciate. So apparently these are Eastern Zhou swords around 2750 to 2000 years ago and they're like very likely a status symbol not actual fighting swords highly decorated precious but not particularly practical hilt and they were made with an iron blade which was very rare at the time this might have even been meteoric iron so definitely for an important person at court here you can see the blade better it can definitely be compared to Tutankhamun's dagger that was made of meteoric iron. So a uh, highly valuable item at the time. Then we've got some forms of the Cinquidea, not all of them. This is a short sword or dagger that became popular for a limited time in the 15th and early 16th century, only in Italy, apparently, did not uh, spread beyond that. I wonder why that might be. Jokes aside, some of them look perfectly comfortable. Like this one right here, absolutely nothing wrong with that grip. That up there, I don't really see a problem with either. Uh, and this is much more obviously a sword, whereas a lot of them look more like daggers. It just depends on where you want to draw the line between a long dagger and a short sword. In my opinion, this is the most extreme form that still looks reasonably comfortable. So clearly the emphasis is on providing an excellent grip that doesn't slip out of your hand no matter what you do. You've got, of course, the pommel to help out with that. So if your fingers wrap around here, that's going to naturally want to keep it in place. And then you've got this shape here as a palm swell. It seems like the square looking knobs on the ends of the palm swell could be a little rough, but probably no big deal. Even if it gets slippery, this you should still be able to have a really good firm grip on it. This on the other hand is where I personally draw the line. This looks remarkably uncomfortable. Not only do you have basically a pointed palm swell, especially on this side here, you also have another set. So you've got pointy knobs there as well. I cannot imagine this is comfortable to hold. The Cinque Dea was designed as a practical weapon, as a cotton thrust dagger or sword. So apparently they did, they didn't mind, but um, it, it sure looks rough. This one here, I don't know. The knobs in the center of the handle look a bit awkward, but it might feel a lot better than you would think based on the picture. So this could actually be pretty good in terms of ergonomics. Then there's this rapier from 1560. You could possibly grate cheese with it. 
Maybe it's a special commission done by a blacksmith who is so fond of his files that he always wants to have a file-like object on him in his hand. To be fair, a lot of rapiers had wire wraps seemingly designed more with aesthetics in mind and grippiness, technical term. But this one, uh, that's taking it to a whole new level. The pommel is basically a stylized fur cone and everything else follows that highly aggressive, abrasive pattern that I can only imagine would shred your bare hand. It's probably definitely intended to be used with gloves or, you know, maybe just really manly men with ultra calloused hands. Here's a stiletto dagger, a type of dagger with a very slender blade that could be used to stab into the gaps of armor and that could also be used as a assassination tool, essentially. Not really a fencing dagger. There are plenty of daggers designed to be used along with a rapier. This is not that type. They could also be prestige items with which to show off your status, in which case practical handle shape is not as much of a concern. Uh, this right here, I mean, you could still use it. It would just not be terribly comfortable such a shape. Uh, again, beautiful craftsmanship, but not exactly an ergonomics masterpiece. This one here not only looks uncomfortable to hold, it's also one of the most hideous things I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, you wanna carry that on your hip? Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's better. What do you think? Next up, some hunting swords. Emphasis on some. This one right here is perfectly fine. They're also called hanger and they were used during hunts to save ammunition, basically, to dispatch a wounded animal instead of having to shoot it again. And over time, they also became common as court swords. Uh, officers used them as well. So it could be a practical item, but it could also be a status uh, symbol and of course for nobility it was a spectacle as well a fun diversion uh, they didn't have to hunt out of necessity for food but they would also do it for fun uh, to hang out with other nobles basically and uh, so you know having a particularly fancy hunting sword to show off could be attractive to these people like this one from 1750 for example beautiful work delicate details here on the grip, the kind of thing that you can easily break off or scuff up or otherwise ruin if you're you know, chasing through the woods. This might have been a court sword exclusively, not taken out into the woods for actual hunting. This one here looks fully functional and practical, but rather unpleasant to hold on to. Now, the advantage of staghorn uh, that you haven't polished and ground down extensively is of course that it gives you a remarkably good grip uh, particularly with gloves this is yeah uh, if, if you want to emphasize traction over comfort then this is the kind of sword for you basically something like this you could use no doubt they are practical but not really the greatest thing to wrap your hand around i imagine and this one right here is also exceptionally ugly using staghorn as a guard as well Ugh. i mean no offense to anyone who happens to like something this uh rustic or i don't know how you what we call it but certainly not my thing here's a british officer sword from 1870 also a bit of a cheap shot because this was not intended to be used and that's mostly the case. You could, if you absolutely had to, you could use this. It just seems like it would feel really awkward in the hand. In the same category is this congressional presentation sword here. Again, just supposed to be worn, not used. Uh, but it's kind of funny to imagine holding a golden corn cob in your hand as a sword handle doesn't even just looking at such a patriotic American sword make you want to, I don't know, invade foreign countries and liberate their oil? And for something more recently made, wouldn't you like a knife that literally bites you when you use it? There you go, jaw knife.
Enough said. Sold. And if that's not edgy enough for you, how about spine sword? Don't you just want to wrap your fingers around a nice spinous process? Actual technical term. Yeah, that seems really nice and comfy. Totally not try hard. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Hope you found it interesting or entertaining, ideally both. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. I sent LK Chen an email about these and got a helpful Fuck. I sent LK Chen an I sent LK Chen an email about these and got a helpful email Fuck. I sent LK Chen an email about these and got a reply. I sent L I cannot talk today. A highly decorated, precious. Thanks, dog. A lot of rapiers had wire wraps that were. The entire thing is just.